the Virtual Shopkeeper, and I am thrilled to be here with you today. Um, Johnny was just before me, my friend Johnny, and thank you, Johnny, for sending folks over here to, to my channel. Uh, today is all about vintage, and I have some vintage goodness to share with you. Um, I have also listed down underneath this video in the description portion everything you need to know to purchase an item. So if you're the first one to put the item number in, each item has a number, if you're the first one to put that number in, then that item is claimed by you. If you aren't sure if an item has been claimed or not, or if you have a question about any item that I show, you can send me an email. My email is below as well. I'd like to thank, thank Kraken Christine, Bridget, the baker's daughter, and young star girl Caroline for putting this awesome uh, hop, shop, drop, whatever together. Um, it's great, and I'm thrilled to be a part of it. So, without further ado, let's get shopping. Today, I'm going to be your chauffeur. We're going to take a ride down memory lane. A little bit of a trip. So you better bring your best suitcase, your best hat, and your best leather gloves as we ride down memory lane. Our first stop is sometime in the 70s. We have this lovely pair of uh, drip glaze salt and pepper shakers. I can tell you that I spent many wonderful evenings at the supper table on plates that are exactly like this very nice set. They do have their stoppers. They are not marked. There are no chips or cracks. Number one, twelve dollars. Number two, a lovely set of goblets made by Libby back in the day. They are about five and a quarter inches tall and about two and a quarter inches across. They have this really lovely scroll pattern. And on each of the six glasses that I have, that scroll, scroll pattern is in beautiful condition. So these, item number two, will be $28 for a set of six. Next up is item number three this very vintage, probably 1950s box purse, poodle purse. The decoration is done in some sort of raffia material. The grass looks and feels real. Um, the knots are hand tied and the design on the front is hand done as well. So as you can see, has leather handles and the lining is a draw bag, a drawstring. Opens up to allow you access to the purse. It is made by Santee. There is the label. As you can see, the lining is very clean. There are no rips, no tears. It is in excellent condition. The exterior of the purse is in excellent condition as well. This is item number three. The bottom, a lot of time, times on vintage purses, the bottom will show wear, but this one looks really, really good. There's no fraying, no rips, no tears. The only thing, the only issue with this purse is there are some age spots here and there but those, some of them appear to be part of the weave, but there are some that do look like age spots, and those can probably be cleaned, but I decided to let the new owner do the cleaning. 
beautiful purse, very vintage, just really fun. I love this purse. I was thrilled when I found it. Item number three is $65. Next, I have a little Eau de Gary bud vase. It's hand painted, has a little bit of mariage. As you know, that's the raised glaze that, that's painted on there. It is called Floral Light. It is hand painted. This pretty little bud vase can be yours for $12. Next, I have this beautiful set. I made them a set. I actually found them in two different, different places. But this is Highland Pottery USA. This pottery was produced in North Carolina, in Hickory, North Carolina, starting back in 1946. And the owners... Um, built this company and they made their dream come true. They actually had uh, a couple of very famous designers do some pieces for them. George Briard was one of them. Um, he, he designed some pieces for them. These two pieces are just lovely. There is one condition issue with the short piece. As you can see, it does have a significant chip there on the top, but if you turn it in that direction, it really is not noticeable at all. So this Highland uh, pottery could be yours, the set, both of them, $28. Speaking of George Briard, look at this. This is item number six. This is a lovely little enamel teapot, and if rare is defined by, I can't find it on the Google machine at all, then this would be rare. Uh, I did find a couple of things with the balloon design, but nothing, I did not find another teapot like this, and it is signed, George Briard. And I'll tell you a little story about George. George immigrated from the Ukraine, and his name was not George. It was uh, a name that I decided not to even try to pronounce. But where he got the name is the person he was working for had a Briard uh, herding dog, which is a French herding dog. And he liked the, the sound of Briard. He thought fr a French name would give him a little oomph, and we all do know George Briard, and um, that's where he got his name. There is a little bit of rust around the top. It could possibly be removed, but it does not go through to the middle. There's a little bit of rust around the edges. Not unusual for an enameled metal pot and a couple of little nicks here and there but for the most part it is in beautiful vintage condition so for the george briard item number six this is 45 dollars oh and i didn't mention the handle is wood the handle is wood i don't know if y'all got the word but brass is coming back. And these two quail are just beautiful. This is a fine example of really good quality brass from the mid-century. Um, you can see that the brass, is, I don't know if it's treated or has a coating or what the deal is, but it did not turn that dirty, dingy, dull, color that a lot of the old brass um, takes on with age. This still has a beautiful patina that shows its beautiful design. These weigh about four pounds together. The big one is about six inches tall and the little one is about four inches tall. They have lost 
the um, felt bottom somewhere along the way, but that would be easy to replace. So item number seven, the brass quail, $28 for the pair. Next up is this beautiful porcelain cat. It's by Royal Dew Bohemia. It is about uh, seven and a half inches tall. She is very regal. She is very mid-century. Those lines are, are very, very mid-century. This cat has no chips, cracks, or crazing. And she will be $35. $35 for item number eight. Item number nine is a Leo Ward Bluebird of Happiness. It is signed. This is not original, but it's similar to what the original would look like. It is signed and still has the ori original sticker. It says Leo Ward 2003. And the sticker says Bluebird of Happiness. Yes, Bluebird of Happiness. And some of it is worn, so I can't really see it. But there's the Leo Award 2003. So item number nine. Item number nine for the Bluebird of Happiness is $22. And he's about two and a half inches tall. And he's about... Four inches from side to side. Number 10 is this beautiful uh, dish that is overlaid with silver. It's about, whoops, about two and a half inches tall and about six inches across. It is triple footed and as you can see it has that beautiful fan design around each foot. There's very little, if any, silver loss. It is tarnished, but some people like that tarnished look, so I decided to leave it as is. This is item number 10. It is $14. Item number 11 is a rustic looking old fella. This is actually Charlie Russell. He was the famous sculptor. This bust of him was done by C. Dennis in 1962 and it was mass produced and banks all across the Midwest used it as a promotion. So it is indeed a bank. You put your money on the, from the bottom. There is no slot on the top. Put the money in the bottom and it does say it says Banthrico Incorporated Chicago. And again, these were promotional items that banks distributed to their membership. This is item number 11, and it is $35. Item number 12 is about as vintage as you can get. This is a set of canisters. The canister is done by Fred Roberts. Fred Roberts, made in Japan. This is a large canister without the top. It stands almost seven inches tall. The little one stands a little over four inches tall without the top. With the top, it's more like, what, do you, what would you say? six, seven inches there, and maybe 10 inches here. There are a few chips and cracks. Um, there's a chip there. No cracks, I didn't mean cracks. There are a few chips. There's some chipping on the inside rim here. There's a chip on the bottom there. 
believe that's it for that guy. This one, a couple of little flea bites on the underside of the lid and a big chunk on the underside of the lid. It has flea bite there, has a chip there, little chip there, chip there, chip there. So, you know, they are showing their age, but it's rare to find them, much less find two of them um, in a set. So the canisters, the Fred Roberts canisters, are item number number 12, and I'm asking $25 for the pair. Item number 13 is a ginger jar. This is an Andrea by Sadik ginger jar. It is made in Japan, has the number 7262 on it. It's a pale green. It's item number 13. There are no chips or cracks. It's in really, really nice condition. Item number 13, I'm asking $14. Item number 14 is a set of Lucite candles. I was so thrilled when I found these in the wild. These are clear and have the gold flecking or flaking on the inside. There are no chips or cracks. There are a few scuffs here and there, but my uh, my guess is they were stuck in Grandma's buffet drawer for many years. They are beautiful in beautiful condition. The bottom where it has the the material that helps it stabilize it in the candle holder it has worn off, but that should not affect. The look, you can always wrap a little bit of tape around there or uh, something. I'm sure you can come up with something to keep it stable in your candle holders. This is item number 14, and I'm asking $38 for the pair. Item number 15 is a salt and pepper and napkin holder set. The salt and peppers do have their they're uh, stoppers on the bottom. There are no markings, except this one says Taiwan. They are just little fruit towers. There is a little chip on this one there, and a little bit of rough spot on the top. This one appears to be in really good condition. I haven't found any chips or cracks on it, and the napkin holder is in really nice condition, no chips or cracks. So item number 15 is $16. Next I have item number 16. These are Comfy Kids from the 80s. They're in excellent vintage condition. He has a little mark on his face, but that could probably be washed out. I did take their clothes off and give them a gentle hand wash and let them air dry. It's rather unusual to find him with his beanie, so I was happy that, that all the parts were together. Sweet little dolls, about 15 inches tall. She has her little tag that says Comfy Kids made in Taiwan. He has his little outfit on. Really nice condition. So these guys, the pair of them is $35. Item number 17. I'm sorry I don't have a number for this for some reason. But it's item number 17. It's a set of three apothecary jars. These are very vintage with the original labels. This one says oil of wintergreen. 
and it gives the dosing information. Plumber Drug Company in Portland, Oregon. This one is Paragoric. Boyson's Pharmacy in San Francisco. This one is Dr. Plummer's Original Ointment. Uh, it's trying to focus on everything else. There we go. Prepared by uh, Plumber Drugstore um, in Portland, Oregon. So these, there are no chips or cracks. The tops, oops, I'm not going to take that one off. The tops are roughed up so that they fit snugly. No chips or cracks in the tops. Really cool set. This is item number 17. Item number 17, the apothecary jars, the set of three for $30. Next, I have item number 18. Item number 18 is a Victorian jewelry box. It has this beautiful scene on the front of fancy ladies and gentlemen they're dancing. I found this at an estate sale and it was in pretty rough condition, but I was very pleased to find all the parts there. So it has a, a thumbtack right here and what was attached to that at some point was a ribbon so that you could pull the ribbon to open up the box. The mirror is in really good shape. There are no cracks or chips. There's a little bit of a discoloration or kind of a hazing through there, but you can still see an image. The inside is, is all intact and all there. Often these parts are missing or the glass bottom is missing but everything is there in this in this box. It needs a little TLC and if someone is into restoring vintage or antique items then this would be a great project. I like it like it is. I think it's very very old looking and I like the I even like the discoloration that has come along with age. So this Victorian uh, jewelry box, number 18, is $65. Number 19 is a bit of a mystery to me. It is a trinket box. It looks black, but it's not. It's not black at all. It is a very dark emerald green glass that you can see if you hold it to the light just right. I think you can see there. It is definitely a dark green glass. It has this silver, I'm sorry, not silver, gold stripe around the top of the bowl. There are no chips or cracks on it. There you can see that green, green glass coming through fits like so. It is marked on the bottom, uh, copyright, and there are four, four C's, and I'm really not sure. I tried to do a little research and have it, I just could not identify um, that marking, but it is definitely vintage. Item number 19 is $12. Item 20 is a set of Stangle blueberry cups, coffee cups, in beautiful, beautiful condition. Um, you see the blueberry pattern with the leaves on the back. It is Stangle Pottery. So I'll tell you that it says Stangle Pottery Blueberry 
Trenton, New Jersey. So both of the cups are in beautiful condition. They have that lovely yellow stripe around the bottom. Stangle Pottery, Trenton, New Jersey, blueberry pattern. So item number 20 is $12 for the pair. $12 for the pair. Item number 21 is very mid-century. Some of you may recognize this. This is Treasure Craft. It is an ashtray. It has the Treasure Craft Hawaii logo on the back or marking on the back. It's very orange, very orangey, vintage goodness ashtray. And then this one is not exactly orange. It's a very dark red. It's made in Japan. Very mid-century. The pair of ashtrays, item number 21, $18. Next, I have a Lefton Baker. He's in excellent condition. There are no chips, no cracks, a little bit of paint wear here and there. It's marked Baker. There's the Lefton sticker. This is item number 22. He is about seven inches tall. He, I love his face. You just got to get a look at the face. And he's sitting on a bag of flour. Very cool vintage piece. Item number 22, $28. Here's this beauty. This is item number 23. Item number 23 is this gorgeous perfume bottle. It is very mid-century, very geometric. It is about seven inches tall. There are some flea bites around the bottom. It's really, you have to feel them to find them. Um, but there are a couple of flea bites there. I wasn't able to identify any other issues with it. Um, beautiful, beautiful piece. This is item number 23. And item number 23 is $48. Item number 23. Thank you for spending some time with me in this All Things Vintage Shop Hop. Uh, it's been great fun, and I want to invite you to go next to Bridget, the baker's daughter. I have her link below to her channel. Please go over and see what vintage goodness she has to share with you. Please hang out with us the rest of the day and enjoy your hop, sh uh, channel hopping from one to the other. And I hope to see you in the chat soon. Bye-bye now.